So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Once again, welcome to Cloud Security Technical Event. We are on the day five, and uh, this side it's been Robin and uh, Surak. It's been uh, connecting you on uh, from Cloud Security side. Now, this event on the day four, we have discussed about a concept called Microsoft Azure Firewall. We were discussing about how firewall has been uh, configuring. We were discussing about how this has been implementing also. Today we'll be discussing about how practically you are able to configure a Azure firewall on in a Microsoft Azure side. So let me take you into the whiteboard. So yesterday's sessions, we are discussing about how firewall has been practically implemented in your organization, right? So we have seen we are using a layered approach for implementing security in your organization. Considering to a VM, we understood like if you are using a VM, you have a VM is been available. This VM is been attached to a VNIC. VNIC is been attached to subnet. Subnet has been attached to VNet and this has been connected to the external world. So now we are discussing about how practically you are applying a security on into this different layer because if you are seeing here, Subnet is one layer, VNet is another layer, here VNet is another layer and OS is another layer. So we have undershoot in the VNIC level. You are applying NSG. In subnet level also, you are applying NSG with the help of that. Uh, traffic management or a filtering, we are enabling. Now we are discussing about a firewall. With the help of a firewall, you can able to manage all the incoming or a outgoing connection on in Azure infrastructure. So you have a firewall is been available. So with the help of VNet, uh, all it's been working as in a hub and spoke mode. And the hub and spoke mode, all the traffic is been connecting to firewall and all the traffic management is been configured with the help of Azure Firewall. A couple of points we have learned here. Firewall is not a free product. There is a cost or a price is associated. There are three modes it can able to configure. One is a basic, standard or a premium. This has been supporting NAT rule, network rule, and this has been supporting application rule. And we have learned uh, this has been um, configuring based on a policy. We have learned this has been based on a hub and spoke model. This has been working. Now, right now we are planning to implement a, a simple uh, firewall policy in your organization. For example, like you are going to implement a VM You are trying to be a lab here, okay? You are going to you are going to implement a VM here with the help of a VM. Right now, this VM will be configured only with a private IP address. Then, by default, all of us know. So, like with the help of a private IP address, you don't have any option to take a RDP connection here, right? There is no option to take a RDP with the help of a private because you don't have any option to enable a VPN here, right? Because VPN is not enabled. So if VPN is not enabled, you, you don't have any option to uh, configure here, right? So, so whatever option VPN has been configuring here, you don't have any option to configure it uh, uh, to use the private type address here. So, so you can able to configure a VPN service here. So with the help of a VPN, you can able to use it here. But right now I don't have any VPN connection here. So we are trying to use a firewall policy or a firewall concept. With the help of a firewall, we'll try to see how this VM can be accessed. I'm just giving a scenario, like you have a implementing a VM only with a private IP address. Now we'll see how you can use a firewall for communicating to this. 
let you let me take you into Azure portal. Now, let me delete the existing one now because there is a resource group has been created yesterday and I can see there are a few new people has been joined here. So I don't want uh, people to get confused. Let me clear this one. So this will help you people to understand the concept. Well, so just give me wait, wait. Give me a second. Apparently, let me delete this one. Okay. So I don't want people to get confused with this topic. Clearing few resource which is being created. So give me a second. It's up to you. We are trying to see how natting can be used in your organization in a practical way. So thought of uh, clearing some resource which already available in the portal. Let's wait. It will take hardly two, three minutes for clearing these components. Let's wait. So we need to wait, we are just clearing. So it's been clearing is in progress. So uh, let's wait. You can see still the firewall deletion is in progress state. Sure, Sachin, you can use. Uh, yes, we'll happy to help you. I hope you are joined in the WhatsApp group. In case if you are not joined, uh, please join. And uh, there are our numbers is available. So we'll be able to help you on that. Which certification path you need to connect it will help you.
So firewall deletion, uh, it's going to take another two or three minutes. So we are in, uh, yeah, we are uh, clearing a uh, resource group and firewall which have been created yesterday. We are going to configure a natting rule here. So we don't want any uh, confusion or a conflict on the firewall. So deletion is in progress. You may be able to see on in the even activity log, you may be able to see the progress bar. So I don't have any mechanism to speed up that uh, deletion because it's been uh, I have or any admin can only initiate. Uh, so we need to wait. So it's been now. Uh, we have shared this uh, screen here in between. I just muted my mic. Right now, the deletion is in progress. So, so it's taking a time for completing a deletion because we have a many resources been configured here that the reason it's taking time. Generally, it will take hardly two minutes time maximum for deletion. This one, oh, you can able to see the deletion is in a progress stage. The lab currently we are doing, it's been about uh, Natty. Yes, Albert, I'm sharing a screen and uh, you may be able to see the deletion progress. Firewall Azure Bastion service, generally this will take time for creation and deletion also because there is a lot of dependent resource. It's been configured on in the backend. So generally it will take some time. So let's wait. So meanwhile, let's uh, replicate our lab here in the whiteboard. So what exactly we are going to do, that is a lab part we can able to do it here. So we are going to create a resource group called uh, in East to US data center. In East to US data center, you are creating a, a resource group called orange. In the orange group, you are going to create a VNet called Pro VNet. Inside a Pro VNet, you are configuring a subnet. So this Pro VNet, orange v, Pro VNet, we are giving an IP address 10.0.0.0.16 subnet you are giving 10.0.0.24 now you will be assigning a vm here vm1 and 
this VM will be configured only with the private IP 10.0.0.4. This is the lab right now we are doing. Once this is done, we will be trying to connect to this VM from internet. You have internet is available. That means from your location, we'll try to connect to this VM. But right now I cannot do because I have a only option of private IP address here. So we'll try to see what is the option is been available in front of us. So this is the lab right now we are doing. Now deletion is been almost finalized. You can able to see the resource group deletion all it's been pending. Firewall is been completed, deleted. Only the resource group deletion is been left. Let's wait. So almost completed. Yes, you can able to see all the resources be cleared here. Now let's create a VM. I'm creating a VM here in the East to US data center. So we have selected two. We are creating a resource group called Orange. VM name we are given it's been like server one or a VM one depends upon your choice. I'm just giving it's a it's or let's create it in a North Europe. So let's give it in a North Europe. Now I given Windows. Actually, the username I'm using. I'm giving a production VNet. I give an it's mean like a prod VNet. I've created a two subnet here. One it's been subnet A and Creating another subnet called Azure Firewall subnet also. Because you may be seen like a last day when you are created a firewall, there is a Azure Firewall mandatory name subnet we need to configure, right? You may be noticed here. You may be seeing this for your lab. Yes, this is the lab when you are configuring, you may be noticed like the firewall name. Just deleting and uh, giving the firewall name. Sure, so it's giving 10.0.1.0.0.24 because this needs always it separate firewall this vm i'm attaching into this prod vnet creating that a vm here Validation has been completed. I'm 
so the vm creation or you can able to see this uh, deployment status is been showing its deployment in progress it's in a deployment in progress a stage keba so you can able to see there's a deployment in progress window you may be able to see on the screen right so right now i hope you can able to see a screen right our team members can you just confirm i hope you can able to see azure portal layout window now it's been right can you confirm is it only caber is facing this issue yes thank you can and uh, yeah thank you eric and team for confirm yes thank you i at least for three four people yeah. so there may be some lag uh so we, for seeing on in the teams maybe that's the reason so so we have a well okay so let's wait so deployment of the vm on in a production network is in progress so you can able to see it's, it's taking time and the server is been almost it's been finalized right now you will be getting a message saying that hey admin there is a deployment is been completed now let me go and verify my vm gear you can able to see the virtual machine is been configured it's been configured in the north europe data center and if you am selecting here i can able to see this vm is been configured with a public ip address and this got a private ip address as well is a private ip address as well so the same being it where this is been attached the public ip private ip address is been received so right now i'm going to remove the public ip address i'm saying like i don't need a public ip address there is a cost is involved due to some security reason i'm removing a public ip address of this uh, uh, resource so i'm removing this public ip address the right terminology we can use in a cloud code disassociate i have disassociated this uh, public ip address from this vm means this vm currently it's been hosting or it's been working with only one ip address that is a private ip address all of us are already aware of the private and public ip address concept the private ip address we cannot use in the internet it's a it cannot use routable or you cannot use a routing on an internet in case if you have a vpn you can use that private ip address now if you go and validate the virtual machine you may be able to see this vm currently has been running without public ip address here now the question is coming now the customer is asking how to connect to this vm what is the option is been available because right now I, i don't have any public ip address is been available with me because if you are able to see this public ip address tab right now this option is been null and there is no public ip address is been configured so how to connect to this vm that is a question currently we have now let's go back to the whiteboard here now we can able to go to a whiteboard the lab so far we have done you have configured a east to east data center inside east to east data center you have configured orange resource group inside that you have created a prod vnet it's been configured with a 10.0.16 and you may be able to see this has been configured with a subnet and there is a vm has been created right now we understood the ip address assigned it's been like 10.0.0.4 also now you may be notice like when we are going to configure any vnet on in a microsoft portal you may be able to see ip address has been always starting with the dot zero dot four you take any network if you take any network i'm not saying it's a 10 dot one if you take any network on in a microsoft cloud generally this has been configured with a private ip address right but most of the time you may be see, seen this ip address are not distributed this basically not as a reserved ip address in a cloud 
preserve type address because the moment when you're trying to create a vm you may be seeing like always the ip address has been starting with a 10.0.4 in case if you're configured another subnet there also you can able to see always it's been configured the 10.1 so always the numbers are you started with a four have you noticed this one can you comment it on the chat have you noticed this uh, option Have you seen this? Uh, yes, Sujit is not. Yes, one, two, three, no, zero, two, three is been resolved. That means the right word, Albert. So, zero, two, three is generally it's been resolved. Yes, so basically, if you're seeing here, if you take any, this is basically known as a reserved IP address here. So, if you take a reserved IP address here, uh, two and three basically using for azure dns one generally it is using for gateway this is using for network and if you take any network 255 will be using for broadcast so always this ip address will be start releasing from 0 0.4 onwards only so from a security point of view you need to understand where this 0 1 2 3 is been uh, missing because many times people may think like, hey, there is some hacking happen and someone has been using this IP address. No, this basically it's been a reserved IP address. That's the reason your device or a resource or any Azure resource has been mapped to subnet is been not taking this one. Now that's about the IP configuration part here. Right now we are in a situation, right? We have a VM has been configured. We need to connect to this uh, 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 VM, so we are checking what is the options we have. In case I had a, in, in case if I have configured a VPN in my organization, I can use a VPN concept, but right now I don't have that option here. So I'm going to implement a feature called Microsoft Azure Firewall here. So with the help of Microsoft Azure Firewall, we are going to connect to this uh, computer. So let's go and implement a firewall here. And the firewall also I'm going to use in the same region where the resource has been configured, I'm going to attach the same VNet. So let's go and create a firewall here. I'm enabling a firewall feature here, seeing that firewall is been going to enable it in the east to yes data center. Let's go and enable it. Name icon, it's been called protection firewall is to use data center firewall policy have been configured here I think we have selected a North Europe since as a reason uh, firewall has been not selecting here. Yes, we are selected a region is in um, North Europe. So it does be on the same location. So I have been configured a firewall public IP address also. Public IP address has been assigned by the Azure itself. So let's give that. Enable the firewall here. So you can able to see the deployment is in a progress state. So let's wait.
So firewall implementation is in progress state. So right now the deployment of the firewall is in a progress state. So let's wait. Firewall implementation, it's happening on in the backend. So deployment still is in progress. So let's wait. So hardly it will take a uh, three to four, three to five minutes time for deploying a firewall because in backend it's been uh, attaching a VNet, attaching a subnet. So there are some backend processes been happening. That's the reason it's taking a time. Right now, if you're seeing a screen, you may be able to see that is a firewall public IP address has been assigned. Now it's been a creation of the production firewall. You may be able to see the status. So let's wait. So on the screen right now, you are able to see there is a message has been, event has been captured saying that event log has been created here, right? Not event log, the firewall has been created here. So right now, the firewall 
configuration has been completed. You are getting a message on the screen saying that firewall has been deployed. Now you can go and check on to the Microsoft firewall here. There is a firewall has been implemented. You go to the firewall here. This is a production firewall has been implemented. And this got a public IP address. This got a private IP address also. Now, if you're clicking here, this got an IP address of for uh, 68.2194. And it's got a private IP address of 10.0.1.4. Now, if you go back to your whiteboard, your firewall, it's been deployed here. Your firewall has been ready here. So it has got 68 dot series here as a public IP address. It's got 10.0.1.4 as a private IP address. So this has been attached to the same pinet. So this is your firewall. And this has been connected to internet now. This has been clear to everyone. If yes, can you comment it on in the chat? If yes, and so far it's been good, can you comment on the chat window? So we can able to go for enabling a natting feature. So all the members requesting to confirm, are we good with this concept now? Few people has been confirmed. Thank you, Oscar, Alfred, Susan, Glenn. Okay, good, good. So next procedure we are going to do. Sri Lanka or a Philippines. Come here. My private IP address. I cannot use direct RDP method here. So this was the first method we used to use for against in case I need to make any kind of a remote connection to my PC. So right now the RDP option is been not available here. So I'm going to use a firewall with the help of a firewall public IP address. Right now you understood there is a firewall public IP address is configured here, and you have a firewall private IP address also available. So I'm going to use Microsoft Azure Firewall public IP address. With the help of that, I'm able to, I'm going to connect to this uh, computer. So right now we are going to install a natting, the feature you're going to use, it's called a natting feature. Let's go and create a natting inside this. Yesterday we understood once your firewall has been installed, there is a firewall policy is being configured automatically with the help of a firewall policy your and their configuration has been working now if you select your firewall properties you may be able to see there is a policy tab if you are clicking here there is a policy option you can able to see here so here you have a natting rule you have a network rule and you have a application rule also right now you need to connect a natting feature here saying that if anyone wants to connect from external using a public ip address of firewall you need to convert or translate into a private IP address here. So I'm going and configuring a natting rule here. How to do a natting rule? We'll try to see. I'm just going clicking on a natting here, clicking on a tool saying that rule correction saying that there is a RDP rule. It's saying that there is a rule that allow a RDP connection here. So default rule I'm setting here saying that a DNAT on source NAT I'm doing here saying that if anyone has been connecting to this vm from externally go and translate this so here i'm saying that rdp to my vm now source ip i'm saying right now i'm connecting from sri lanka so i'm just uh, giving my right now i've been connected from india so i'm just giving an ip address of my laptop here saying that my public ip address i'm just giving public ip address i'm selecting saying that from my laptop this is my public ip address this is my source ip address saying that from this source laptop having an ip address 150.129.101.210 if someone has been trying to connect it here i'm saying if someone has been connecting with the RDP protocol, go and trans with a protocol called TCP. I'm just giving any port number here, okay? You can give any port number here. I'm saying that it's a 
port number I'm just giving, it's been uh, 4,000 just, just for understanding, I'm just giving 4,000. Destination IP I'm going to give is my firewall public IP address. So I have a firewall is being available here. So I'm just giving a firewall IP address here. Give me a second. Let me take a firewall IP. Let me connect to a portal here. So I hope you can able to right now you can able to see here firewall has been configured here broad firewall take the public IP address of that VM public IP address is uh, let me copy find out what is the public IP address 68.214 so I'm just configured it. Go and connect to firewall. But when it is connecting or someone has been coming with the RDP protocol, go and translate or a translate means go and connect into internal IP address of my VM. Right now, what is the IP address of my VM here? IP address VM I am translating here. So you can able to see here, you have a VM is here. I'm going to translate if any RDP packet is coming, translate to 10.0.0.4 in VM, which port you need to connect because that VM needs to understand what is the type of the port, right? So I'll give 3389. So it's saying that port number 3389 saying that it's been going to connect to a remote protocol. So I'm just giving add. So we have enabled it natting here so a destination nat it's been configured here. So this uh, DNAT creation is in a progress state. So you can able to see that uh, it's been a progress state. It's been happening. Now on the notification area, you can able to see this one. This road creation is in progress state. So let's wait. DNAT creation is in progress state. So you can able to see here. So the net creation is in a progress state here. So rule collection. Is in progress, so once it is ready, we'll try a netting concept. Let's wait uh, the VM to be rule to be updated because update is been possible
right now on the screen you are able to see there is a A rule for your natting is been enabled here you can able to see if you go to a natting rule there is a rule number 100 is been added saying that rdp is to this port is been allowed now the moment right now if i'm trying to connect to my firewall here for example like just giving connection to 68 dot with ip address it's been 68 dot 219 dot 94 dot 142 for thousand so right now i'm trying to connect to this computer here you may be able to see this will be translate my traffic right now i'm going to connect with the 68 dot this is the ip address i'm using see i'm using instead of vm what is the real ip address of my vm I got I don't have any public IP address for my VM because my public IP address I uh, was only the private right 10.0.4 for example like if you go back to the whiteboard here right now I'm connecting on my system saying that RDP screen I'm taking and seeing 60 day dot whatever IP address so it will be sending a packet here so it will reach here so after reaching a firewall firewall will understand this is a request for a NAT and this is a request for RDP how what your computer will do a computer will using a NAT feature it will send this packet to a real computer what is the real computer here it's called 10.0.0.4 this is basically known as translation network address translation destination translation here now if you go back here you have a network has been connected here right so let's connect it here let's press connect is asking the username and password so right now you can able to see on the screen it's asking the username and password Give me a second this i'm not able to move this one to the next screen you may be able to see this has been connecting see this has been connecting to vm through public ip address of firewall here see in firewall you you are you have in configured in operating system right but your operating system is configured in the vm one and that got 10.0.0.4 right see here right now we've been connected to internal computer see this has been connected to internal computer here if you go and check the host name if someone is thinking like is it the same computer or not you can able to see what is the host name this has been host name is server one what is the ip address of this computer this got only one ip address 10.0.0.4 here see this got only 10.0.0.4 you are fought on the uh, no that is an alpha time configured in the uh, firewall saying that if any request is coming on into firewall with a port number 4000 that needs to be translated into the rtp rdp protocol 3389 of your vm that for my identification i just enabled I hope it's been clear to everyone any question anyone right now using a public ip address of uh, firewall you have enabled a uh, connections here team if you are okay with this uh, natting concept can you comment it on in a chat either it's a like button or it's been like a just one comment saying that this concept has been clear how practically this has been uh, natting has been working with the help of a firewall in your organization so thank you team so few people has been commented yes multiple vm means that uh, you need to configure an address space there. so if you want to instead of a single vm you may have to give the uh, multiple vm ip address uh, 
uh, there is one option you can able to configure if you are want to do a micromanagement of your organization then you may have to go for this one generally uh, you won't be using a firewall configuring for a natting on this one so basically you'll be using a web server if you are configured only the web server uh, traffic you want to go then that kind of a situation you'll be using in case if you have multiple view can you have only option like uh, uh, either address space or it's been like you may be how to point to that particular VM. Any question from anyone? I hope it's been clear. Yes. Thank you, team. Let's take a five minutes break. Come back and we'll try to do a couple of application route rules, how this can be configured. Let's take a break and come back. Thank you. Muting the mic and stopping the sharing for during the break time and we'll be back in five minutes. Small break.
I hope all are back. If yes, requesting you to confirm through the chat option. Thank you. Waiting the response from the rest of the members as well. Let's go back to onto the firewall. Right now we have seen how firewall has been configured here. And uh, we understood with the help of a NATing, you are able to connect to the VM. Now let's try to install a routing feature here. For example, like uh, you want to implement a routing concept on in the portal. For example, like if you want to configure some firewall or it's been like website filtering if you want to do in serial organization how to do this one because right now if you are able to connect to a microsoft portal this one by default it's been uh, traffic is been accessing for example like if you go to the vm here if i'm trying to access some website for example like i'm accessing a website Microsoft.com or Google.com. If I'm trying to access, you can able to see this is been working. Now I want to implement the policies saying that all the traffic it's been going outside needs to be filtered. I don't want Google.com or X or Y website to be accessed from this VM. Right now you can able to see uh, Microsoft.com or a Google.com is able to access from my VM. The VM right now we've been connected through a NAT, but the VM is able to access all the traffic here, right? Onto the website, external website like a Google.com or a Facebook.com. Even after implementing the firewall, website has been allowed. The purpose of a firewall we have been implemented, we need to do some restriction of the external communication from a VNet. Even though we have deployed a firewall, such kind of restrictions are not implemented practically yet. So the reason it's been like right now the packet is been uh, going to external uh, without any policy has been implemented here. So we have a firewall is here. Firewall is not acting any action on the filtering or FQDN or any kind of a website filtering. So we need to ensure that the VM packet is been routing through the uh, firewall. So we need to ensure that all the traffic which has been originating from the VMs which has been hosted inside a VNet is passing through the firewall. It's been passing through the subnet to the firewall. So we need to enable a routing feature here. Right now, if you can able to see here, you have a firewall is here. Uh, right now, you have a subnet here, like a VM called 10.0.0.04 is available. So that traffic has been not going through the firewall. So we are ensuring the traffic which has been configured has been all the traffic has been from the uh, subnet of your VNet has been uh, uh, passing through the Azure firewall subnet. So all traffic has been uh, monitored or all the traffic has been blocked. Right now, if you go to the Azure portal, this generally no, I'm not somebody's called. Okay, because I am not seeing the screen. Okay, so. I thought it's been shared. Screen is got shared. Sorry, it's been a mistake from my screen because I was in an impression or in a perception saying that screen is shared. Somebody calling, so you don't have my number, right? So, yeah. so I was in impression because I was switching a monitor and I was in impression that uh, screen is got shared. So, so I say mistake from me, sir. Yeah. Right now, if you can able to see here, you have a VM is been configured and uh, uh, from this vm traffic is been not passing through the firewall only the natting is enabled which allowing you to connect from external now right now i'm sitting inside a vnet now if you go 
into the whiteboard. You enable the traffic from external to internal here, right? Right now, if you are seeing here, the traffic you enable from external to here using a feature of natting with the help of a external natting or it's like a private to uh, public to private mapping you are given. Now, my question here is if I'm accessing from here to external, internal outside, if I'm going, for example, like a facebook.com or meta.com or some X or Y website, if I need to do filtering, this traffic is been not going through this firewall here. So I'm ensuring all the traffic which has been originating from this subnet, it's putting a condition saying that this has been passing through the firewall. There's a condition we are configuring here saying that all the traffic which has been originating from the subnet is passing through the firewall here. How this can be enabled? This can be enabled with the help of a feature called routing. With the help of a routing, you are configuring a subnet saying that any traffic which has been configuring here, so the same uh, uh, traffic needs to be passed through the firewall and the firewall will validate. And if it is well and good, then it will be uh, gone to the extra. Now, if you go to the portal, I'm enabling a routing here because right now the VM has been able to access, so I'm enabling a routing here. So for doing that, you need to go to a service called route table. You can, the route table is a resource here. So you need to go to a route table. You can able to go to the route table. In the route table, you will define a routing saying that this year, Basically, this is known as user defined route saying that there is a rule I'm configuring saying that rule name is been orange. There's a look, there's a resource group. Okay. Now, this has been the same location, North Europe. I remember rule name I'm giving. This is for routing into all the traffic route into firewall. I just configured firewall route enabled a user defined route. Table. It's called route table. How configured? I haven't configured any UDR here. UDR is the terms called user defined route. I haven't configured any routing. I just made a route table here. So if you are considering uh, Microsoft Azure, basically this has been supporting three types of route. One it's been system route. It's been supported. Second one it's been supported a user defined route. That's called a UDR. And uh, there is a BGP also. It's been supported. That's a dynamic route. In case if you have any uh, VPN gateway is in place, then you can able to use a BGP also. Right now, the lab right now we are doing how to block a website. Right now, we have enabled a natting. We are able to take a RDP of or the remote desktop from an external network with a private IP address now with the help of a public IP address of Azure Firewall. But what after connecting to a firewall or after connecting to a VM? We understood the VM is being able to connect to the external world and old IP address is able to access. So we are trying to block some websites. Now, if you come back to this system, routing is being enabled here. Now, if you go to the route table here, you can able to see there is a route table has been created, but I haven't configured any routing here. So I'm going to configure a routing saying that all traffic, I'm just clicking on this. I'm configuring a rule saying that all traffic going to external world or external network needs to route through the firewall. So I need to put a manual route here. So if you select a route table, inside a route table, you are configuring a routing here. Now I'm enabling a routing here. So I'm just enabling a routing saying that this is associated into a network. It's been associated to subnet here. Just seeing a route here. I'm just adding a route, saying that firewall rule routing name has been firewall. And then next to internet, we can just link that any traffic which is going to internet. Next address is internet. 
0.0.0.0. It's any IP address going internet. Internet generally it's been always represented with zero. So this will understand the packet is going to internet. My next hop, next station is going to be firewall. Here I need to give private IP address of my firewall. What is the private IP address of my firewall? Let's go and check it. My private IP address 10.0.4. I'm adding this is my IP address. So any traffic which has been coming from the VM, my next hope is going to be with a firewall. How this has been identified? Because I have been identified given private IP address there. So I'm just enabled a rule here. We need to wait a few minutes. Now a network rule has been configured here. Now if you go to the computer here and if you type to Google or any website, you may be able to see for example like generally it will take five to ten minutes time Your firewall has been attached here, so we need to wait a few minutes because we have enabled the uh, rules, everything. But it's taking some 10 to 15 minutes time for replicating. Just refresh and wait. We have configured a rule. Let's wait. This is taking, so we need to wait. Then this is 10 to 15 minutes. It's been uh, taking for applying this one so we need to wait rule is not applied so we need to just close it and Right now, you may be able to see here, your firewall has been start acting now, see? Right now, all the traffic to the Microsoft is being blocked. What is the reason here? Because the traffic right now, it's been passing through the firewall because I haven't allowed any website on in the firewall. For example, like if you're trying to access facebook.com, site has been blocked i hope it's been clear because we have configured a rule on in a firewall saying that any packet which is going to internet this has to pass through a firewall so by default firewall will block all incoming connection that's the reason right now you are getting a message in that your website facebook or google or microsoft whatever site you have been configured it's been blocked so how what what is the step you have done? You have implemented a, a firewall in a fire in the subnet level. You defined a routing route or a route table. You have been configured saying that traffic to the external is been passing through the firewall. Now this firewall is been blocking that. I'm pausing here for taking a question. Uh, if this concept has been clear to everyone, can you comment it on the chat? Now, next chapter, I'll be discussing like how to enable a website. Now, right now, all the websites are uh, filtered, right? All the FQ, it's been based on the HTTP or HTTPS ways it's been blocked. Now, someone is saying like, I need to allow Microsoft.com or a Gmail.com or a Google.com or in a organization, how to enable that. So that is the next discussion we are going to do it. So this topic so far, it's been covered. If it is good and clear, one like or one comment or one, uh, if we can put it on in the chat window, we can have a thank you, Sujit, for confirming. Waiting the response from the rest of the members as well. So, team, if you can take a minute for commenting on in a chat, that will give you a uh, in, yes. Question by default firewall all the internet. By default, it's been blocked all the connection to the once the firewall has been enabled, it will block all the outgoing connections.
by default if you are not routed the traffic into azure firewall azure firewall by default it's been blocking everything but in this case your subnet was not routing a traffic to the firewall that is a problem in case uh, if you want to do a whitelist or a block you can able to do it avishek here so you can just go to uh, in case if you want to configure a particular ip to be blocked you can go to the same firewall policy in the firewall policy you can enable a rule called network rule in the network you can able to go to a network rule here you can add a block ip address. for example like a one ip address to be blocked you can give the source here see for example some particular ip to be blocked you give a block here source you can type it here instead of rule collection here you put a condition dna so if any communication is coming from that ip or a port or a ip range this can be blocked here in the source address either you can give a source single ip address or the entire network to be allowed you can able to give that uh, entire range so this can be able to block it from here so in case if you are basing ip block that will block ip address completely from that uh, this one, any from the all all application or a port or it's been coming from the it's been blocked from the clear So any question, everyone? Yes, thank you, team. Okay, now let's, next topic is about how to enable a uh, website. Right now, Microsoft.com or X or Y website is been not allowed here. Now next, let's go and see how a particular website can be enabled or disabled here. Now, right now we have disabled a website, right? So all the traffic has been uh, blocking here. So now I need to enable some website here how the application rule can be used for enabling some traffic. So this generally enabled inside a application rule. You need to go to the application rule here. You can go to a application rule on the portal here. You can click on the firewall. Inside a application firewall, click on the firewall policy. Firewall policy, you can able to see here. Click on the application rule. In the application rule, you adding a rule here. You're adding a rule here. I'm adding, adding a rule. Saying that allowed website. And some website needs to be allowed to me. Allowed website, okay. I'm saying application rule. I'm configured a rule here any range here and saying that rule collection has been application rule saying that source for example like uh, uh, microsoft website to be allowed from that vm i'm saying like microsoft site so what is the source ip address of this computer let me go and check what is the source ip address it's been 10.0.40 I'm saying that from this computer, if anyone has been connecting with HTTP or HTTP, yes, with the FQDN, what is the FQDN we are using here? It's called www.microsoft.com, right? What was the website was working? For example, like I need to allow microsoft.com. Microsoft.com is the website I need to allow. I'm allowing here. Microsoft is allowing here. So I can just add it here. Microsoft.com is being allowed. So here you can able to put a condition whether to be allowed or a disabled. So you can put a condition here. Now I'm just adding a rule here. See that from that particular VM, if in case if you have more than a one VM or from a complete network range, some HR or some particular website to be allowed, you can able to configure that also. So that also it's been possible, like in case if you want to configure any uh, any computer to be so let's wait.
now application rule for Uh, other you need to add source IP that you can put it if your example like you a complete range you can in the you for example like 10 dot 0 dot 0 put all the IP address there so you can able to add the ranges here to put it in the source here so, oh. Here you can able to add it. Decora. Hello, hello. Look like or yeah, now it's been pretty. So I will in case if you want from a block IP address, you want to option right now. We don't have any available only ten request only to be a right now. Uh, I have not seen any such options in the firewall. Let me be implemented uh, in that way in a policy. I'll find out. Right now, I haven't seen any. It's been a long. Uh, I'm not seeing any such kind of option is been on the portal. So right now we have enabled a application rule here. If you go to a firewall here, you can able to see a application firewall rule. In the firewall rule, you can able to configure. There's a website has been allowed. Now let's go and check our portal here. Are we able to access the website? See here, you are allowed to use you can able to blacklist that IP address such in. You can put in a DNA condition here. Right on the screen, team, you may be able to see Microsoft site is been allowed here. So you are able to access. Now the parallel if you are trying to access any other website, see facebook.com has been not working. All other website has been completely blocked. Only I have allowed Microsoft.com with that. So Microsoft site has been working here. So this is the way generally your firewall rules are it's been configured on in a microsoft portal so based on the customer requirement you may be able to do fq in filtering or a tagging so in a security site uh, this is very important in an organization to ensure that your uh, website is been or the traffic into the uh, external or internal is been continuously it's, it's been validated and you are taking an action to block yes you can able to put in a condition such in saying that there is a white list or a black list you can able to do for example like if you are taking white list case i'm just giving a white list case like uh, uh, there are uh, normally there is a uh, load balancer or a web app or there is a uh, commonly used website from an external world you can able to white list it for example like azure load balancer or azure, if any azure resource is using a static public ip address or any application rule if you want to configure that you can able to give a application rule whitelisting. I'll be giving a Azure commonly used Azure public IP address list so that you can able to whitelist in the portal. Uh, in the WhatsApp group, I'll upload that commonly used uh, uh, IP address from the Microsoft that you need to ensure that you can whitelist is the blacklist. Generally, it's been coming like in case if you want to configure any kind of a uh, uh, blocking or a denial if you want to configure then you can able to go for blocking that and you maybe notice one more tool on in the portal that's called azure firewall manager 
for example like in case if you have a multiple firewall it's been configured it's been very difficult for you to go and individually manage a firewall so this can be managed in a centralized tool that's called a firewall manager here you will be able to find out what other type of the uh, which vnet is been currently it's been protected is there any kind of uh, issues you're facing or in case if you want to configure any kind of a policies everything you can able to manage from here rather than going individual firewall and configuring so all firewall management can be controlled or it's been managed from with the help of a firewall manager so this will help you it's a security management service this is basically using for managing a centralized security policy or in case if you want to configure any kind of application or a network or a, any any kind of a uh, route management for your cloud based solutions then you can able to go for this one so this basically simplifies uh, centralizing your network or a whole level of a rule or a whole kind of a filtering uh, across the multiple azure firewall plus instance because you may be using a multiple regions and each region you may be having a individual firewall is being configured now rather than going and checking a firewall on each region uh, if you have implemented a uh, firewall manager in your organization you can be able to manage multiple firewalls so you may be knowing the continuously changing rules it's been difficult and so on each region so this can be centralized can be monitored with the help of a firewall manager now coming on into the couple of point Uh, once the lab is over this is very very important ensure that you are deleting your firewall because you need to because in case uh, uh, if you are deploying any resource the cost is involved so especially the firewall rate is been bit high so ensure that once your lab is over you have deleted that uh, resource second thing uh, when you deploy any firewall your vnet and firewall try to configure it on in the same location because the resource group and uh, firewall also need to be on the same location so with that point i'm concluding a firewall topic and a couple of uh, links i'm pasting on a chat this will be a additional learnings for you this will give you some uh, uh, documents about the firewall configuration right now i'm uh, giving a link where you can learn more or review about uh, microsoft azure firewall right now i'm posting about azure firewall documentation link so this link request to everyone to bookmark it you can able to bookmark right now i've been pasted azure firewall documentation this is giving you a complete uh, details about azure firewall and uh, let me give you a handout also handout link is in the second one this is the firewall manager link you can able to use the firewall manager link here so this is the firewall manager so these are the three resource or these are the three material you can able to use in case if you want to learn any further studies on the firewall side request everyone to bookmark this page this will help you to manage your uh, help you to understand about the firewall now let me go for a assessment now let me post a quiz this is the first question for you today let me paste it one second sorry i just got a courier now this is the first question for you let me type it let me type a midway quiz for you this is the question for you today so this is the first question for you you can answer it on in the chat so this is the uh, first midway question for you you can post it on the chat
I request all the members to participate this one. Read the question. Take your own time. Just try to evaluate yourself, okay, rather than just copying here. So ensure you have, you have completed this self study. Just try. You may be not able to answer it, right answer on the first attempt. But at least try to familiarize with this question because generally, if you know you're going for AS at 500, you may be getting this kind of a question. So let's wait. Let's try for answering this one. Don't worry if the answer has been right or wrong. That's the second thing. Attempting is the first thing. So answer for this question is, it's been application firewall. So answer for this question is application firewall because you need to configure rule it's been application rule. So you need to configure that application firewall here. Right now, the answer for this question is correct answer is for this question is application firewall because application firewall is basically doing a filtering. So I'm happy that uh, almost everyone has been posted. Uh, it's been configured. It's been a application. Yes, right one is the application firewall. Now let's go for the second one. This I happy that you are able to answer this question. So what is answered has been posted right answer. So so this is the next question for you. Let's try. This is the next question for you. Yes, thank you, Alfred. So this is the next question for you. No, you need to read the question, everyone. So <laughs> one person made a mistake and everyone is making the same mistake. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Answer is wrong. And so, so the answer for this question is wrong. So so try everyone. The, uh, whatever the first question is posted is wrong. It's not C, OK? This is the helpline, OK? Answer is not C. Now everyone is typing A and B. Combination we have question. <laughs> Super. So the answer for this question is like the question. You just go through this question again. The question was asking which of the following it's been uh, uh, it's been study about uh, public IP address. So the answer it's been like it's basically assigning static IP address for you. Yeah. You may be seeing like the moment when you are assigning an IP address, it is a static public IP address has been assigned to your firewall. You may be seeing like Azure firewall is got a uh, public IP address and you got a private IP address. You may be notice public IP address for the Azure firewall was a static. So answer for this question is answer B. So answer B is the right answer for this question. So with that note, uh, so we are concluding and uh, we are certifying all these people attend this today's training is firewall masters now. So thank you team. Uh, it was a nice discussion on a firewall. So we tried to cover a couple of uh, case studies and finally we done an assessment also so thank you team it was a nice discussion on the firewall now next topic is we are not concluding training okay we are concluding only firewall portion we are moving to the next topic called azure ddos you may be able to heard about a concept called ddos is the concept 
So a few people thought like a hey, thank you and uh, uh, waiting for the certificate. No, we are not concluded the training here. Okay, we concluded only the firewall portion. So Alfred is saying like a hey, thank you very much. Happy weekend. I think Alfred is in a weekend mode. <laughs> so <laughs> right, Alfred. And Abhishek also. So. Raj, so Raj also. So like it's on few more hours. Okay, <laughs> Alfred. It's after that, it's almost a week we've been connected. So it's been interact more professional. So we'll try to do this. Connected and uh, please join. We have election vacation, so you know, it's okay. In a good mode, okay. So Sachin is planning to. I think it's not. So be it after the DDoS second. So we'll be discussing. We'll try to. So DDoS is a simple topic, uh, Abhishek. It's been like just need to enable that topic. Then uh, Kendi will go for uh, DDoS and identity creation. So let's go back to the uh, another concept called DDoS. How security can be provided on in a VNet level. Then we'll take a break. Then we'll come back on the uh, Azure Active Directory concept. Now let me enable my screen so you may be seen. Give me a second, okay? I'm just sharing my screen. Just making us a short DDoS. Okay, so the next topic it's uh, today's session is about Azure DDoS. Before that, uh, uh, let me go back to the first slide. We were discussing about how to make a platform protection, and uh, we have seen this uh, defense in depth screen. So we have seen how it's firewall or a VPN or it's been like how uh, it's been uh, providing uh, the security here. So so next topic is about how security can be provided inside using a DDoS. So next topic name is called Azure Security with the help of Azure DDoS. DDoS. So you may be heard about a DDoS attack in your uh, uh, normal uh, operations. It's basically known as a denial of services. So there is a two concept you may be heard or it's maybe aware about uh, uh, in a normal scenarios. One is about uh, it's called a DDoS, and second one is about uh, a distributed denial of services also. So it's been basically an attack. In a previously, like if you are taking in any organization, we used to get a lot of uh, uh, attack from a cyber expert or a cyber uh, hackers, right? Saying that uh, they'll be attacking the website. And they are ensuring that our important resource or websites are going down. So they will generate a traffic and ensure that your uh, website, which has been hosted on in the internet, is not able to uh, to handle that load. And your resource will be uh, going with the auto scale mode, or more node will be added, and finally will be in a trouble. So DDoS was the one of the attack previously, or it's in the past was happening because the, if the attack was originating from one location. Previously, this was known as a DOS attack, so denial of a service. But nowadays, this attack mode of operation has been got changed. Basically, like uh, uh, this has been start using a bot kind of a or artificial intelligence kind of or bot kind of a devices are started using. So with the help of that, uh, it started attacking the uh, services or a website, ensure that uh, uh, the application resource has been closed down and uh, the endpoint it's been uh, uh, publicly reaching to the internet has been going down so basically the end result will be your either the application will goes down or it will uh, make sure that this website is going a uh, slow also so this is a huge impact we have on in the infrastructure there are some situation if you have configured any website and uh, that website is having a uh, large number of uh, 
uh, large number of uh, website has been configured. So you may be having a um, another issues same, seems like uh, uh, website may be auto scaling or a virtual mission scale set has been configured. Uh, that will start uh, enabling auto scaling or a virtual machine scale set on the portal so that will lead into a lot of uh, um, um, lot of rules or a lot of additional cost into your organization so we'll try to see how this is being enabled and how this can be enabled on an organization and uh, uh, how the dos can be prevented in your uh, network so let's try to see this one how this is can be enabled and how this can be enabled on any organization with the help of that, how you can able to provide a DDoS uh, uh, protection or a mitigation plan here. Now coming on into this portal. Give me a second. So now it is coming on in a Microsoft side. Microsoft has been supporting two DDoS protection plans from us. One is called DDoS protection basic plan and uh, another one is called uh, uh, DDoS protection standard. So generally all this kind of a layer attack or it's uh, all this kind of issues has been mitigated with the help of a DDoS protection features uh, which has been enabled on in a Microsoft. Now if you take any VNet or any uh, VNet, which is being configured in Azure. By default, Microsoft is supporting two plan. One is the DDoS protection basic. That is the one plan it's been supported. Second one, it's been like this has been supported. Another one is called DDoS protection standard. Also, there are two plan. It's been supported. One is a basic and another one is a uh, standard also. Now, protection basic is been a free of cost. You don't need to add anything. You don't need to pay anything for this uh, protection basic. By default, if you are taking any Azure portal, by default, this is being enabled in uh, uh, all uh, uh, devices. So by default, if you configure any VNet, by default, uh, it's been, uh, uh, it's been, uh, uh, by default, this is being configured. Uh, uh, it's not all the VNet. You don't need to enable it separately. By default, this is being enabled in all the uh, uh, VNet. And so, uh, by default, you don't need to add this one. There is no extra cost is being uh, required for this one. Basically, this is been this basically this is being uh, enabled on all the uh, computers. So you don't need uh, uh, on the uh, portal. So you don't need to have any kind of a um, you don't need to enable any extra DDO. Uh, DDoS protection plan on in a, a basic one because basic is by default. Whenever you are creating any VNet, by default your VNet is been configured here. So by default it's been uh, configured on in a portal. So you don't need to have any uh, configuration to be enabled from your uh, networks. By default, if you are seeing on in a portal, by default it's been uh, configured here. So you don't need to enable. Uh, uh, anything on in the portal gates so by default this has been enabled by default so automatically this has been created uh, as part of the as part of the uh, installation by default automatically this has been enabled in a azure azure platform so so by default this has been uh, so by default this has been enabled automatically you don't need to pay any extra cost on this one because intelligently it's been blocking on the network layers or it's mean like uh, intelligently it's identify uh, all the DDoS attack and it's automatically uh, it's been configured. But when it is coming on a protection standard, this is some additional support you are getting from a Microsoft saying that uh, if there is any DDoS issues been reported, you will be getting a dedicated technical support from a Microsoft. There is a dedicated DRR team, basically known as Data by uh, DDoS Protection Rapid Response Team. You'll be getting a quick support from that team. If any website or any server is been down because of a DDoS, you will be getting a credit point also. That's basically known as you'll be getting a cost guarantee from Microsoft. If any attack is, been, is resulting any kind of a scale out option, uh, that will be giving a uh, guarantee, cost guarantee, uh, saying that uh, Microsoft will be giving you a uh, guarantee saying that if in some your website is going wrong, you'll be getting a service credit point from the Microsoft. By default, 
only resource which is been hosting on in a Microsoft is been enabled with the DDoS protection. By default in the VNet level, automatically this has been enabled. You don't need to enable a protection basic in a separate option. By default, this has been enabled in a VNet level. It's not in a resource level. The point you need to remember here, your DDoS has been enabled not in a VNet level or not in a subnet level. Always this has been linked with your VNet. So it's been so all the resource which has been hosting under the VNet is going to get this protection. You don't need to go for an individual VM uh, DOS enabling or a DDoS enabling. By default, this protection has been enabled in a VNet level. So you don't need to have any kind of a separate uh, tool or separate uh, uh, enablement to be done on the subnet level or in a resource or a resource group level. So completely, this has been configured in a VNet level. So you don't need to have any kind of additional configuration to be done from a resource or a resource group or a subnet level. So my point here, it's been like uh, when you're taking a Microsoft Azure scenario, there is a two offerings we have on in a Microsoft Azure. So one is like you have a basic plan you have, and second one is like you have a plan for in a uh, protection standard also. Basic is been by default, it's been enabled on a uh, automatically. Now, in case if you want to go for a protection one, let's see from where you are getting this option. You may be seeing like at the time of creation of a VNet, for example, like I'm trying to create a VNet here. Let's go to a VNet creation. I'll show you on both the ways. Okay, existing also I'll show you, and a new one also I'll show you. So the moment when you are trying for creating a new VNet, you are giving all the resource details here. Yes, uh, you're right, Paytoon. Uh, uh, like all the resource in say that VNet will be protected from this. Yes, exactly, you're right. Now I'm trying to show you from where you are getting this DDoS option here. You need to go to network, give the range. I'm just giving like a protection. Just you can give it like a dev net. Now in the security tab, you may be you'll be getting an option like in the next next if you're typing in the security in the top you are able to see a security tab right. In the security tab, the second option you may be noticed right. It's saying that do you want to go for a DDoS protection standard? Do you need to go for any additional protection method? This is the option generally we are getting. Now, if you are enabling this one, this will allow you to enable a cost method. Like right? this will be enabled uh, all protection standard, like a premium mode. Basically, like if you are taking any uh, organization, you may be heard about a protocol attacks, right? Uh, there are different level of attack you may be studied in a cyber security. You basically there may be something called as a, a UDP floods. You may be heard about like amplification flood or you may be heard about a spoof packet floods. You may be heard about uh, uh, another option is been like a protocol attacks or uh, SYN flood attacks or reflection attack. There are many attacks is been or SQL ingestion or you may be heard about a cross site scripting layer uh, layers and attacks. So this will uh, allow you to protect uh, all this kind of attack from your uh, uh, using a protection standard one. So. Now coming on into this uh, portal or into the uh, DDoS one. So this is the place you are enabling your DDoS protection standard here. So here you can able to uh, enable this uh, protection features. So whether you want to go for any kind of a protection one, you can able to uh, protect it. So you can able to uh, additional protection layer, like in case if you want to go for any kind of a adaptive tuning or attack analytics or a metrics or alert or multi-layer protection you want, then you can go for this protection standard. So if you are enabling this one in your VNet level, there is an additional cost will be enabled with the protection standard. By default, if you're already having any VM has been configured, for example, like this VNet is already configured. Now, this has been configured in a basic mode. And if you want to convert it, then you need to go for the VNet properties. Inside this one, you will be getting an option called DDoS protection tag. Here you can enable it here. So here, uh, standard here, once you already, if you're protection standard this will be protect or a malware protection will be protected from this one
of a DDoS is being protected with the help of a Windows Defender. Is being enabled uh, inside a Microsoft DDoS one. All the anti malware uh, activity, malware related protection is with the help of a 365 product. It's called Defender. Yes, if you're using a, a protection standard, uh, uh, protection standard, you can have a alert or a monitoring can be done. So let's go back to the presentation. We were discussing about a two type of uh, DDoS uh, feature you are getting. One is called a protection basic you are getting, and where you can be able to configure all kind of a layered attack options you are getting. Now, if you are coming on into the protection standard, you have a 60 DDoS uh, 60 plus mitigation plans you are getting here. Now, these are the few features, and just try to make a comparison chart of this. So, this is the right side. You can be able to see what are the features generally we are getting on in a basic and Right said I try to include about a standard also how the standard protection is being enabled on in Microsoft. So basic and standard, I mean, and try to enable it here. Now coming on into the uh, uh, pricing part, you can just go to the Microsoft portal. You can able to see here. It's like uh, if you go to Microsoft portal here, Azure DDoS. If you just type Azure DDoS pricing, you can able to see. If you, click, if you click on this protection pricing, you can able to see the charge. You can able to see the pricing and you can able to see all the SLE and the details you can able to see it from here. So you can able to see the protection plan options. Now, with that note, we are ending the DDoS part. At least you got the concept that like there is a DDoS option has been available on the Microsoft portal. So with the help of that, you can able to uh, protect your DOS or a DDoS attack from the internet. If you're good, can you just comment it on a chat? I'll be sharing the handout of uh, DDoS in the group. Okay, so I'll be sharing the documents about DDoS. So next session is about identity management, how the user account is being created and uh, how uh, role-based access control can be done or identity management can be done on in a Microsoft portal. So next topic is about identity management. So we'll take a 10 minutes break and we'll come back and we'll be moving on into the identity management. Now almost two hours now. So let's take a uh, uh, 10 minutes break and come back and uh, let's move into the Active Directory concept. Thank you.
So good morning. Not good morning. <laughs> I hope you are everyone back. So I was just thinking like it's meeting is just started. Yeah, thank you, Avinash. Yeah, thank you, Michael, for a nice comments on the chat. Thank you so much. It was a nice batch for us as well. Yeah, certificate half will be start sending from tomorrow onwards. So you have to wait till next Wednesday and Thursday because we have a large audience we have, right? So you need to give uh, uh, one or two days time for making that. Saturday and Sunday has been, uh, it's been off. So Monday onwards, we'll be doing that. And in case if you have any corrections or in case if you are not received, uh, please let us know. And now you need to, for getting a certificate, please ensure that your name has been updated on that uh, form. So there are some situations like many times we have seen like people attended the event and they have not registered on the uh, link. So people will tell like, hey, I attended the training, but I will got a uh, certificate because we are referring that form for sending this uh, uh, certificate. So in case if anyone is attended that link and uh, by mistake you forgot to register it on the portal, request you to once again to use that link for registering this one. So there's the action you need from your site. Now coming on into the session. So I hope all are back and I can see a few people have commented also. So next topic is about identity management. So let's try to understand how uh, access or how authentication or authorization has been configured inside a Microsoft Azure infrastructure. Uh, you are quite familiar with the term called authentication or authent uh, authorization, right? There are two terms um, generally we are using uh, instead in a, any infrastructure. It's called authentication or authorization. So next topic name is called authentication and authorization. How identity management is been provided or what are the option has been available uh, inside your organization to provide this identity solution. I hope you can able to see my screen and the topic name it's called authentication and authorization. Yes, I have shared a screen. It's uh, authentication and authorization. This is the topic. Now, when we had a discussion about a uh, cloud, we have learned about a couple of terminologies, right? We learned about uh, creating a free account. We understood there is an actual Azure account is being needed for logging to this Microsoft Azure portal. Only with that only we are able to use it. Then we understood like if I need to use this Azure portal, uh, I need to have a subscription is needed because it's a, since it's working in a OPEX mode or in a building mode, I need to have a subscription is needed. Now, after that, we have learned once you entered into Azure portal, you have n number of resources been available on in the portal, right? You may be seeing like uh, you have a firewall, you have a DDoS, you have a virtual machine, you have a storage account, you have a VPN, you have a database, you have n number of resources been available. Now you think a scenario, you are working for an organization. There you have a 5,000 users are available. Now everyone got an account, they are connected to Microsoft portal. And if they are making any change or any uh, unwanted mistakes on the portal, that's going to affect the end their organization, so, right? So the moment when you are logging to Microsoft portal, first thing it's been like, it's been validating your username and password, right? You are typing a username and password with the help of the username and password. The first step is happening, it's called authentication, right? It's been happening, it's called authentication. It's validating this one, whether you are able to enter into that system or whether you are able to enter into that uh, portal is been validating right whether the username and password is been able to use inside your organization is been validated with the help of a concept called authentication so authentication is nothing that moment when you connect portal.azure.com the moment you are typing like a portal.azure.com and entering the username and password, it's checking whether the username and password has been able to use inside that. You may be seeing like if you type a portal.azure.com or a PowerShell or any of the tool, 
the first action is being like you are getting username and password windows you're getting right so the first validation is been happening on authentication who is doing this authentication whatever username and password it's been uh, it's been uh, able to use or whether this username and password has been valid or whether it's been protected it's been validated with the help of a concept called authentication now once it has been authenticated next course of action is going to be your authorization once you authenticated you have a hundred plus resources are available on a portal now it's getting a message whether i'm able to access or whether i'm able to or am i authorized to access the resource on the portal right you may be having a you know, 100 plus resources being available here you may be having a firewall or whether you have a you know, virtual mission or you may be having a storage account so the next action is been next action is been like once you authenticated what are the resources i can able to use in the azure portal that's very important because you once I log in, am I, am I eligible to use Azure VMs? Am I eligible to use uh, uh, or am I uh, have a permission to restart my VM? Or do I have a permission to reset the public IP address? Do I have permission to restart any kind of a configuration on the portal? That has been decided based on the authentic uh, and the authorization has been completely uh, there is a two concept we are using. One is called authentication, and second one is been using a concept called authorization with the help of a authentication and authorization is uh, working. Now, who is doing this authentication or authorization? This has been done with the help of a concept called Active Directory. The concept generally we are using is called authentication uh, or authorization be handled by Active Directory. So, end of this session, you need to understand authentication means that. It's a provision or it's the process of validating your credential. The moment when you give a username and password, it's been validating whether you are able to access or whether you are uh, allowed to enter into the system has been, uh, been generated by this. So that has been done by the Azure uh, uh, Active Directory. Now, authorization means that once I entered into the portal, whether the username and password having a enough rights or enough uh, uh permission to access the resource that has been validated by a concept called authorization whether i'm able to use that whether um, i have a rights to configure that it's been decided by the authorization now if you go to microsoft portal i'm just taking you to a few uh, concept in the uh, past you may be heard about a concept of ldap or you may be heard about a concept of azure or you may be heard about a uh, active directory concept right what is the uh, what is the use of a active directory if you take an a existing or in a give me a second Now, it, when it is coming on in a, give me a second. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yeah, thank you. So I was discussing about a concept of LDAP or a Active Directory. Uh, you are already aware about a, how Active Directory was working in the past, right? Now, if you go to a portal here, or I'm just giving a scenario in all of us are
lot of us are using a concept of a directory, right? So you can able to see here there is an active directory or it's been like a domain name. Generally, we are using for entering to a laptop. Now, if you take a existing infrastructure. Now, if you go to a domain scenario. You may be heard about a two concept is in the past when it's called work group or a domain. You may be familiar with these terms, right? Work group and domain work group and domain. These are the two concept has been available in the past. Right? Can you comment on in a chat? What is the difference between a work group and a domain? Can you comment it on in a chat? What is the difference between work group and a domain? What is the difference between work group? Yes, domain is being controlled by AD and the work group is a single use. Yes, exactly. Now, if you're taking your uh, olden days, we used to have a n number of computers or server was configuring like you may be having a server one server two or a computer one computer two right now you take your laptop you may be having a username called eric this username and password is being saved inside your computer inside a computer there is a file called security account manager right security account manager is the file is generally holding all the user information now whatever user account eric has been created inside his laptop I cannot use in my laptop, right? The moment if I given the username Eric and uh, I given a uh, password, it's called uh, X or Y. Uh, you will be getting a message saying that this username and password is mean not X. That's the message. So that's the uh, username and password. Uh, it's been existing on in the uh, portal, right? So you may be getting and saying that. Uh, Eric username and password has been not uh, available on in the portal. So there's a message you will be getting. The reason it's been like uh, this is the kind of a concept generally you're using. It's called a work group. So work group means that the user account or the detail is been available on the same network and with the help of a work group, uh, it's been uh, validating or authenticate inside the system itself. Now, when it is coming on in a corporate or in a normal uh, organization, I cannot use this username and password on the rest of the machines. That's the reason how I started a concept of Active Directory, or you may be heard about a term called LDAP. LDAP, or you may be heard about Active Directory, or a latest uh, uh, Microsoft operating system. This has been known as a ADDS. So with the help of that, uh, your authentication or authorization is be supported. So basically, this is going to be a centralized repository of all your identity solution your group policy or the user management or a group management everything it's been configured with the help of this now when it is coming on in the azure cloud side your active directory can be configured in a three way one it's been like the moment when you use cloud by default there is a active directory is being configured all your identity management solution is being configured in the portal itself if you click on this portal, if you type directory, you may be able to see there is a Azure Active Directory has been automatically it's been configured here. So right now I'm entering to a Active Directory here. You may be able to see there is a default directory has been available here. So you can able to see there is a default directory has been automatically it's been configured and all the user account and the details and the group you may be able to see here. So this is one method of configuration. Now, for providing an active directory or for providing an identity solution cloud, one you can be able to use Azure based cloud solutions. I'm saying if you want to provide an identity solution in your organization, you have AD has been available. There are three modes you can be able to configure. One, it's been like a cloud based, it's called a cloud AD, that's called basically known as Azure AD. All your user account and uh, group or a, uh, all the identity management solution can be able to use it here. So this Azure AD can be used for a two purpose. 
this can be used for managing old Azure resources, which has been available inside this one. So you have a Azure what you right now when the moment when you entered into Azure portal, you may be seeing like you have a uh, n number of resources being available, right? In case if you want to authenticate or in case if you want to put any kind of a authorization to uh, that computer that can be able to do with the help of a Azure Active Directory. That's one of the option. Second method, it's been like. In case. If you want to integrate to this. Uh, uh, concept or it's been like in case if you have any any kind of a solution has been available on in a portal like a Microsoft 365. You may be using a collaboration tools, right? You may be using a uh, Microsoft Office suite like Excel, PowerPoint, uh, uh, PPT, uh, uh, or it's been like a Visio, all kind of MS Office product. Or in case if in your organization, you may be having a collaboration tools like a Teams or a or SharePoint or Exchange. In case if you are having using any kind of exchange collaboration tool, if you are using. Uh, even that tool also can be using it's been integrated with your Active Directory only. So whatever username and password which you are going to use for your Azure Active Directory, that also is going to use the same um, product only, same identity management solution only. So your Microsoft 365 backend also going to be your Active Directory. Your Microsoft Azure product backend also is going to be your Azure Active Directory only. So this is one mode of operation. Second mode of operation is been like if you are working in an organization, Already, if you have a Active Directory has been configured, you have a DZ has been available here. There you have configured a 10,000 plus user accounts. You have configured a group OZ, or you may be configured a FSMO role, or the security attributes you have been configured. And if you want to interconnect with your Azure Active Directory, that also has been possible. That basically known as a hybrid connectivity. First of all, uh, this generally it's been done with the help of a VPN. There are two more generally we can able to do. One it's been like you need to have a VPN to be enabled. And the synchronization generally we have done with the help of a concept called AD Connect. There is a software MSI file needs to be installed on a member server with the help of AD Connect. You will be syncing all the attribute or the user uh, it's been uh, created inside. Uh, uh, on premises and into the cloud. So with the help of a on premises and cloud, uh, the cloud, if you want to integrate that, you can be able to do with the help of AD Connect uh, uh, tool. So you can be able to use this one. So you can be able to uh, interconnect or you can be able to connect with the help of AD Connect. So this AD Connect will be, uh, for example, like this is Apple.com, and you have a another domain called uh, on dot Microsoft dot com and X or Y. Uh, domain is or tenant has been configured here, and if you want to use the same user and user attributes which has been created on the AD Connect to be sync with the uh, Microsoft uh, Azure Cloud, so that can be done with the help of AD Connect. So AD Connect is a MSI file that will be installed on a member server. So you will install a, uh, another server. This will add into part of this domain, and uh, you will install AD Connect software. I'll be trying to. Give you some documents related to that. We have some time limitation we have, so I'll try to give you some documents uh, about how generally this has been configured. So AD Connect will install on a member server. So member server will be act as an intermediate between your uh, Azure Active Directory and your domain controller. So AD Connect will fetch information or identity information from your uh, DZ, and this will be uh, given into Azure Active Directory and this will be connected using a global admin also. So basically, if you're taking Active Directory, you can use on-prem AD. You can use Azure Active Directory. This is the two, one, two Active Directory you can use. And you can be able to implement another product called Azure AD DS also. Azure ADDS means um, on top of your uh, Azure VM, you will be implementing a VM and top of VM you will install operating system and top of that you will enable a Azure Active Directory. The reason it's been like uh, if you're using existing DC or a domain controller, 
we were getting a lot of attributes or a security policies or your active directory it's not supported there so you are not able you but at the same time the but whatever features or whatever we were getting on in azure was uh in organization as thinking we need so you will be taking a azure install adds and this will be synced with so technically speaking if infrastructure there are th there are three ways is been dropping mic test mic test is it better now is it better now thank you not sure uh, it's been like uh, suddenly what happened so i was saying uh, if you're taking a cloud infrastructure identity management solution uh, it's been configured in a three ways one it's been like uh, existing on premises solution can be used second method you can be able to use uh, uh, additional domain controller it's been configured on azure vm with the help of that you can be able to integrate and you can be able to configure azure active directory also so this is the way generally the solution is been provided on in a microsoft site now coming on into authentication part if you take a active directory let me take you into active directory here i hope you can able to see my presentation now right now i have been shared it is active directory that is the topic right now it's been shared now if you are seeing azure active directory here uh you have a subscription you have a role based access control these are the features we are getting now right now we understood if you are using azure active directory with the help of azure active directory all your authentication and authorization is been happening inside your organization now coming on into azure active directory as i said this can be configured or it can be interconnected with your on premises and this can be connected to a cloud also when you are using a cloud this will be basically can be used for providing a solution to azure or can be able to provide solution to your multi tenant model also now if you are comparing with your on premises active directory and if you are comparing with the azure active directory you may be able to see a couple of uh, difference here so the main difference which you can able to see here it's been like you may be familiar that when you are configuring a domain controller or a ldap uh we were using a concept of forest child domain fsmo role operation master role or group policy this kind of term or terminology and features and service we were using right so that concept has been completely it's been removed here you don't have any forest or a domain or a organization concept has been available on the azure active directory basically this has been working like in a tenant mode basically this has been working like a tenant mode if you are using existing Uh, active directory or existing domain controller you may be notice that was working in a child domain or in a domain kind of a concept so that is been not available here this is completely working with the help of a uh, tenant model or uh, is here so you can able to see here the moment when you create a domain controller here or in azure active directory if you go to the azure directory tab you may be notice here that active dir you can just go to azure active directory here you may be able to see the domain name is been always started with a dot on microsoft.com so domain name is been always started with a dot on microsoft.com so this is a by default domain is been created now if you are an organization you are thinking like no i don't need a dot on dot microsoft.com or dot internal you want some custom made domain like apple.com or orange.com you need to purchase that domain from third party vendor like a godaddy kind of a website are available from there you can purchase a domains then you can able to add inside a domain here see here there is a domain name here you can able to add it here for example like if you want to add a new domain you can able to add domain name here 
So that's the way generally the custom domain are has been generated. You can able to go and add an additional domain here. Now you need to add the domain on the GoDaddy website and this needs to be linked to here also. Now coming on into the uh, um, Azure Active Directory, you won't be able to see any kind of a domain or a child domain or a FSM or all kind of options here. It's been completely working based on in a tenant model. So this basically whatever domain you got right now, you got Eric dot on Microsoft.com or Sujit dot on Microsoft.com or Guna dot on Microsoft.com or Michael dot on Microsoft. This is the domain by default it's been created. Now in this, if you want to go for any kind of a customization that you can able to do with the help of a custom domain option, you can able to do with the help of a custom name tab. Now, another point you need to remember when you're going for Azure or the authentication or the comparison between existing domain controller or Azure Active Directory, another mechanism or another difference you can able to see about the authentication protocol. In an authentication protocol in an olden days or in a domain controller, we were using a Kerberos or NTLM type of authentication. The moment in your laptop when you uh, type the username and password, we were using a, a concept of uh, NTLM or a Kerberos. This was the uh, uh, protocol we were using in the past. But when it is coming on in a cloud side, you are not going to use that protocol. Uh, instead of that, you will be using a uh, SAML or OpenID or OAuth or a WS Federation kind of a protocol. So this may be the, these are the protocol generally we are using. Uh, so these are the protocol generally we are using in case if you want to do any kind of a uh, authentication mechanism if you want to do. So that generally it's been configured with the help of, uh, uh, that is the kind of a protocol generally we are configuring here. In case if you want to configure any kind of a protocol or in case if you want to enable any kind of a authentication mechanism on in the port or in the in case of you want to configure any kind of a authentication uh, in a Azure. You don't need to create any client key uh, uh, here by default uh, that will be connected into a tenant. So you don't want to create any kind of a client key automatically that will be joined into Azure. So you don't need to create any kind of a client client key or you don't need to go for any kind of a uh, client concept here so by default this will be connected so you don't need to go for any kind of a client key kind of a concept now coming to on a microsoft azure side so kerberos is the protocol it's been used so with the help of that uh, your protocol or it's been uh, uh, it's been changed that's one of the difference you can able to notice here so basically it's been like open id or uh, uh, this kind of a protocol or the port is being used with the help of that this uh, connection is been enabled now another point you need to remember bitlocker is another um, uh, concept like bitlocker is another concept that is in encryption side generally we are using so you it's not a uh, uh, it's not enabled with the help of actually this is a different concept so bitlocker is a another concept is being used so so it's been a different one now coming on into the uh, uh, Active Directory concept here. So this can be used. There are two ways we can able to use. You can able to integrate and you can able to integrate your Azure Active Directory with a Microsoft 365 product. And in case if you want to configure any kind of a multi-factor authentication, for example, like if you want to enable a, any kind of a multi-factor authentication or any device registration for automatically if any uh, device or Windows or any Linux is been configuring, if you want to put some kind of a governance policy, that all it's been can be configured with the help of a uh, active Azure Active Directory on the uh, side. So with the help of Azure Active Directory, you can be able to do it. Now that's about the way the Active Directory has been configured in a Microsoft scenario. So with the help of identity management solution, you will be able to provide uh, uh, authentication. You will be able to provide authorization also into the portal. So this is the uh, way generally it's been configured. Now, a couple of options you need to remember. So the moment when you're configuring Azure Active Directory, basically there are three licenses or four licenses has been generally it's been available. By default, whatever Active Directory you're configuring, 
by default it's been configured in a free mode there's a free license is the mode generally we are using so you have a free license is been available you can be able to see there is a by default the license is been configured as a free so if you go to a microsoft azure portal here directory you may be able to see an option called license license tab you can able to see here so in the license tab you can able to see there is a you can able to see there is a license option you can able to see here so you can able to see there is a license option you can able to see here that's by default if you are taking any active directory this has been configured in a free mode see azure direct free mode if you want to go for a license mode if you want to go for any kind of additional feature you need uh, you need to convert your active directory into premium or a premium 2 these are the different versions you are available so with the help of azure premium license if you want to get some additional feature about active directory you can able to convert into additional plan so these are the few features generally you are getting with the help of active directory uh, depends upon like a multi do you need a multi-factor authentication right now you may be seeing like when you are trying to access some particular website we used to get a otp numbers and all right similar way in case if you want to go for any kind of a uh, Similar way, in case if you want to go for any kind of a solutions like a authentication or something, if you want to go, then you can able to go for a name uh, mode. So, multi-factor or so does Microsoft enter? Yes, that is a new feature of uh, uh, passwordless uh, options, uh, uh, Abhishek. So you may be remembering like recently microsoft has been uh, implemented that option microsoft indra it's been the new identity solution has been from a uh, uh, few weeks back they have been provided on in a adfs or it's been kind of a concept so basically on a microsoft has been trying to concept about a indra concept so it's so, so like a password solution they have been configured so basically on the identity solution they have been provided same username and password uh, can be used uh, on to connecting uh, you don't need to have a uh, multiple user account and password is needed so for that they have been i remember almost a uh, month back they have been uh, uh, implemented this one previously it was a preview one now it's a passwordless world they are uh, microsoft is looking so so Enra has been uh, released so end of this session you need to understand uh, so microsoft has been coming in active directory has been coming on in a different uh, uh, versions is a free 365 apps and you have a premium and a premium two also so based on what is the type of the feature you need to turn in the organization you can implement uh, any of this one either you can go for a free or you can be able to go for creating a premium or a premium two also and the pricing also you can be able to see from the uh, portal based on the number of the user has been created you need to uh, Pay the amount so number of the users you are using so you can able to select a pricing one so basically whatever license by default the account has been created that can support up to five lakh users so in case if you really need it for multi-factor authentication for a particular user or a particular group of users if you want then that kind of a situation you can able to convert it to p1 or a p2 model uh, with that note i'm just uh, uh, pausing here for taking a question any question from any members are we good? That's Microsoft or what is the difference is good? Okay. So Sujit and uh, yeah, so. Any other question from any members?
Hello. I was uh, talking a minute. So any question from how to sing Azure into Microsoft? By default, it's been uh, Marlon. It's been uh, uh, sing into Microsoft Azure only. Now, do you want to sing your existing Active Directory into Microsoft? This is your question. If it is you want to sync your existing DC into Microsoft Cloud, you have to use AD Connect. So technically, Marlon, it's like uh, if you're using that, I'm just giving it. I think your I go, your question may be something like this. Uh, you are working in a client project. You have a domain is being configured. So I I thought I'm thinking your question may be something like this. You have a DC is being configured. One second, I'm just taking whiteboard. You have a domain controller available here. This has been configured with a domain code. Apple.com. Now here you have a 10,000 or a 5,000 users you have created. And you have a cloud also it's available. And this has been hosting in your existing data center. So Marlon, I think your question may be something like this how to sync your dc into this cloud is this your question if yes can you comment it on in the chat yes so in that kind of a situation you you, you want to you are in a kind of a situation like all oh, this 10000 user want to use uh, microsoft teams they want to use all this cloud solution 100 plus service is here they want to use all microsoft 365 product so that kind of a situation, as you said, we need to sync it. Generally, this has been two way we need to do. One, it's been like you will establish a site to site VPN connection with your Microsoft Cloud. Site to site uh, VPN will be enabled. Second thing, this domain name is apple.com, right? You will be using one more server. This can be hosted in Azure or this can be hosted in your DC also in the domain in the same data center. This will be installed with the uh, in operating system, Windows Server 2012 or later version. There you will be able to download a product called AD Connect. You can able to download. First, you will install a Windows Server 2012. Then you will add this computer as a member server to this uh, DC. You will configure this as a member server to this DC. Now, once this member server has been added, you will install a software called AD Connect. You can go to AD Connect. You can, you can just go to a portal. You can able to download a product called AD Connect. AD Connect is a software you can able to download. It's an MSI file, okay? You can able to install AD Connect software. This MSI file you will be installing on that member server. Once it is downloaded, you will be getting a screen where you can be able to interconnect your cloud and a Microsoft Cloud. So first screen will be your AD Connect screen will be something like this. Let me take you into AD Connect. Let me. AD Connect screens. One second. Okay, so this screen will be something like this. Once it is installed, you can able you'll be getting a screen like this. See, it will ask the username and password. See, you will be getting a screen like connect to Azure AD here, right? So this place you will give administrator username and password of your domain controller, old domain controller, the DZ one. You need to have an enterprise administrator that apple.com slash or marlon the username you will give next screen will be you need to mention which domain you need to connect it here there you will be giving global admin whatever uh, global admin permission you have on the cloud set that username and password will give so once this both are it's been validated whatever user account and group is available you can be able to sync into microsoft cloud you will get an option like do you need to configure or do you need to move all the user account into cloud or only a particular OU or a particular uh, 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 user account or a group only needs to be moved so you can be able to select it from that. So technically, 
Marlon, if you want to integrate uh, any of this uh, uh, integration to be done, basically it's been done with the help of AD Connect that you need to install on top of the member server. Clear? And one more thing you need to remember, once you created, once you sync your on-premises and cloud active directory, whatever user account you have been created, this will be moved to cloud. Both the side, you will be able to do a authentication, but only one direction only the user creation replication is happening. So whatever user account or identity has been created on in a local domain, from there to cloud only replication will happen. There won't be any reverse replication. It's saying that if you have any user account, it's been available on in a cloud. If you're example, like you are creating user account in Alfred or a Marlon on a Azure cloud, that won't be replicated into on-premises one. Only one side from on premises to cloud only replicator reverse is been not possible. Clear? So thank you team. So yeah, how, what about the admin portal to Azure AD? There are two ways we can able to do. That's a nice question. Can the, it's been like, you can able to use the same uh, Azure Active Directory portal. You can able to use a uh, management or you will be getting another tool. There is an admin center you can able to download. There is a tool that's been available here that is called Active Directory Admin Center. That's called Azure Active Directory Admin Center. You can able to download. There is a portal is been available like aad.portal.azure.com. You can able to download this one or you can access this one. So once you access, you will be getting only the screen about uh, users and group, whatever screen currently you are seeing on in a uh, portal, only that option will be getting. You won't be getting any other tool for like a virtual machine or a storage account that you won't be getting here. So if you connected to aad.azureportal.com, portal.azure.com, only the active directory users and group you will get. That screen can you can be able to use for managing this one. Or the same Azure portal itself, active directory console, you have to use it that. This is the only option. It's not like that if you're taking existing active directory, you had a active directory site and service, you had a active directory domain and service or user group that kind of option was the you don't have any separate console here admin center you can use it or you can able to use the azure active directory admin center there are two options is available you can download admin center is the one option or you can be able to use aad also is the option if i reset ad user password from asia cloud is it synced to yes there are two methods generally Sujit it was using. That's called a password hash and pass through authentication. There are two methods you can able to configure AD Connect. Depends upon how your password write back cache and uh, uh, configuration was enabled. Based on that, you can able to do. That you can de define uh, one in the AD Connect. How your password or sign on to be uh, configured that you can able to configure it in a AD Connect. So thank you team, uh, we are on top of time today. And the last uh, four days we have tried for uh, enabling you some input on uh, Azure security. So uh, this will, uh, it's, uh, 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 it's an ocean, it's been like a secu Azure security is an ocean. So we tried to cover as much as possible. And uh, uh, we are thinking of whatever topics will be covered last couple of days it's been valuable to you and uh, some information or some spark we try to give to you so on uh, making on a cloud security site so in case if you're not registered uh, discord or the portal or a whatsapp group request you to share it so we try to share from a scratch of the security rather than just going based on just a ppt and just completing saying that hey you are a cloud security master instead of that we try to cover some practical oriented or a case study uh, based uh, sessions uh, with the labs and uh, try to share as much as possible with a whiteboard and uh, a, a portal uh, demo. I hope it was useful to you. Yeah. So thank you team. So we should, so we need to, uh, we are not concluding a training here. We are pausing this uh, event for this week and we have a many similar sessions we are planning and uh, Right now, next uh, few minutes is not sufficient to finish this uh, uh, security concept because security has been a large ocean. So if, if you are uh, configuring an event for next one month also, we can able to continue this session because that many topic is even available on Azure security side. So somewhere we need to take a full stop. 
So this week we are concluding here. And uh, thank you all members who uh, put your personal effort and time for attending the sessions. And there was a lot of effort from a Surak side also because for configuring or arranging this event, there was a lot of uh, effort is from his coordination side also. Thank you, Sarag, for organizing this one. And uh, all the members appreciate your time, effort for connecting and staying and uh, uh, making this event, it's been successful and interactive. So with that note, uh, I'm signing off uh, from this event for this week. Hope we can able to connect in future. So thank you all and uh, take care. Over to you, Sarag. Thank you. Thank you, Robin, for the great session. It was really interactive. I think uh, everyone here had a really resourceful five days of session. And uh, I hope to see you all with us in the community. Please do join. I had just shared that link. So if you haven't joined, please do join there. And uh, looking forward to have you guys in the upcoming events. And uh, thank you. Thank you all. Take care. Bye.